All praise in. Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for yesterday and our time with you, and thank you for our rest last night. Pray you'd be in our conversation this morning. Bless our words. Bless our thoughts. Let us pull something astounding from this passage. Pray this in your name. Amen. 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 All right. It's nice and short. Let's go three times. Well, I'll do one. Okay. I'll go one. All right. Okay. Here we go. The next day. Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience room with the high-ranking officials and the leading men of the city. At the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are present with us, you see this man. The whole Jewish community has petitioned me about him in Jerusalem and here in Caesarea, shouting that he ought not to live any longer. I found he had done nothing deserving of death, but because he made his appeal to the emperor, I have decided to send him to Rome. But I have nothing definite to write to his majesty about him, so therefore I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that, as a result of this investigation, I may have something to write. For I think it is unreasonable to send on a prisoner without specifying the charges against him. And so on the next day, when Agrippa had come together with Bernice amid great pomp and had entered the auditorium accompanied by the commanders and the prominent men of the city, at the command of Festus, all was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all you gentlemen here present with us, you behold this man about whom all the people of the Jews appealed to me, both at Jerusalem and here, loudly declaring that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death since he himself appealed to the emperor. I decided to send him. Yet I have nothing definite about him to write to my Lord. Therefore, I have brought him before you all, especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after the investigation has taken place, I may have something to write. For it seemed absurd to me in sending a prisoner not to include also the charges against him. So the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience hall, along with the senior military officers and the prominent men of the city. When Festus gave the order, Paul was brought in. And then Festus said, King Agrippa, and all you who are present here with us, you see this man about whom the entire Jewish populace petitioned me both in Jerusalem and here, shouting loudly that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing that deserved death, and when he appealed to his majesty, the emperor, I decided to send him, but I have nothing definite to write to my lord about him. Therefore, I have brought him before you all, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after this preliminary hearing, I may have something to write. For it seems unreasonable to me to send a prisoner without clearly indicating the charges against him. sense interesting that you're making a party out of this yeah hmm. yeah it's an interesting observation well yeah when you you think normally everybody would come in have a seat they drag a prisoner in in chains out of chains whatever and here they make a parade and Play the flutes and do all the hoopla for the for the king and for Festus and all that, and make a big, big deal out of bringing Paul in. That can't be the norm. It can't be. 
So I remember, was it yesterday? The reason King Agrippa was coming was to pay homage. Homage, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I must have been bringing some sort of gifts or something like, because Festus is newly, you know, in this position of the, as the governor of Judea, I guess. It's something that was like, oh, I've got before you. Here are the gifts, you know. So I guess it kind of makes sense that there's this like, I've seen that before in movies where like the pomp and circumstance and the, like you're saying, the dancers and flute players and the. Well, and, and maybe when Fester sits on the judgment throne, that's the norm. I yeah. don't know. It's just being pretty darn weird. If I was Paul, been, been in prison for two years, I'd be like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Now I understand that. Festus is probably happy that Agrippa's there because Agrippa can tell him much more about what Paul did or didn't do and how he understands it. But it just seemed strange. That's all I have to say about that. Hmm. I feel like they must have known like Paul probably has some plot. Right. Yeah, I think he does. He has yes. renown. <laughs> so yeah. they so they must be like and just entertaining because of Paul's cloud. But without you know knowing exactly what he's done, they can't find anything wrong. Like if it was anybody else they were making these claims, I'm sure they were like, you know. You don't have time for this. You can't find anything that he's done wrong. Let's end it here. Just go about your day. Hmm. You know, the second half of the passage yeah. makes sense. The first half of the passage is just it's strange to me. So they've been, so King Agrippa and Bernice, is Bernice King Agrippa's wife? Yeah. That's interesting. The wife is mentioned kind of over and over again. Agrippa and Bernice. Um, anyway, I, I guess like, so contextually, yesterday's reading, says that in verse 13, after after several days had passed, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects. And while they were staying there many days, Festus explained Paul's case to the king. So they had already talked that mm -hmm. King Agrippa and Bernice had been there for a number of days. And so Agrippa like when we first read this this morning, I'd forgotten all that happened, and it was like they had just rolled into town and they come into the front, you know, oh. to the front room. But yep. no, it was, uh, King Agrippa knew it wasn't like he was being blindsided about Paul. He knew what was going on. He probably talked to. He may have sent for you know, um, you know, like a courier or whatever back to the guys in Jerusalem. And even the Jews in Caesarea, and like, what's going on with the Paul guy? So he probably knew everything, at least from their perspective, the Jewish perspective, when he walked into the room. And probably explained quite a bit of it over those days to Festus. Yeah. Here's what we believe. Uh, but Festus is still like, I don't. He's still a Roman. Yeah. He's like, I don't see it. <laughs> so I guess this is like a, a, um, forum to capture the formal charges as stated by the king. Well, no wonder they're making such a big scene about it because they have to bring in you know, Paul's accusers. I wonder if you know Jewish people would also you know, pay their respects, pay some kind of gift or something so they're like oh let's take advantage of this and get a lot of gifts 
payments, and, yeah, you know, whatever. Kind of, they're, they're being, they're, they're basically taking advantage of the situation to get, get some extra money, get some extra gifts. How long was King Agrippa, the, this current King Agrippa King at this point? How much of his reign overlapped with Felix Sirius? Felix was there, we figured, what, three years? More than that. Didn't uh, you look that up yesterday, Daniel? Uh, Felix, yeah, I can look up the Felix one. Uh, Antonius Felix. Yeah, three to four years. He was Roman procurator of the Judea province. There he is right there. Oh, some actual curly hair. Yeah, he's curly. Okay. He worshipped Aphrodite. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that was. <laughs> um. So yeah, just kind of thinking about the timeline here. So Felix was fifty-two to sixty. And then, um, so then how long was Agrippa? Well, Agri Agrippa before he lost his. And, wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, he lost his Agrippa. Ruled from 48 to 100. Oh, wow. Really? That's oh. what, that's what Livius.org says. 48 to 100. That's so about 58 years. years. So forty eight to a hundred, so that's yeah. uh, fifty two years. Sixty two years. Hmm. Okay. Forty eight. And and then Festus was I think pretty short. Just like three to four. I think even shorter. Portius Festus. Fifty nine to sixty two. Yeah, so three years ish. Um okay. So 52. So Festus is stumbling, stumbling to keep from being embarrassed in sending a prisoner that has requested a hearing with Caesar. Right. And not having anything to put in the letter to say why the guy wants a hearing with Caesar. Totally. So help me out here, yeah. guys, or I'm going to make a fool of right. myself. He's a and he's a Roman, but <laughs> yeah, like it's a serious oh, yeah, punchline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Festus is in a bit of a pickle. He's in a pickle because yeah, because of Felix. And to end a regress for a while, I read a little one liner that said, "If you think about it, when they put you on the what's the stretcher thing." They the rack, the rack, when they put you on the rack, there is a point on that rack for about two seconds that it must really feel good as it <laughs> stretches out your spine a little bit and loosens you up. Yeah. But then they don't stop. So, but yeah, he's, he's pedaling here to try to find something to make him not look dumb. So I don't get, okay. So this is where, this is what confuses me. Festus, you know, from what we can tell, is is not as corrupt as Felix. He, he, he doesn't seem to um, kowtow to the to these Jewish leaders. Um, he's not accepting bribes, maybe. He, he, as the procurator of Judea, as the judge with the authority in that area, he's, he heard Paul's case. He's going to hear it from the leader of the Jewish people. Um, 
you know, his accusers, why wouldn't he just release them? Be like, yeah, I find you not guilty. I dismiss the case. Yeah. I wondered that many, many times. That seems like the natural thing. Even though you've gone to Caesar, if I wipe the charges out now, there's no need to go to Caesar. Right. You're a free man. Have a nice day. Right. Because I'll give you a 30 minute head start before I let yeah. these other guys out of the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> because what you said, I would be concerned about it if I was Festus. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to look like a fool. Yep. And Caesar's going to get pissed at me. I don't want that. Yep. Well, maybe. Get, hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Maybe if you do appeal to Caesar, as Paul did, there's really nothing that your local ruler could do, or there will be no consequence against your local ruler because, hey, the guy asked to see you. Don't lay any blame on me for sending you, sending this guy to you for absolutely no reasonable, like, reason. Yeah. Yeah. I, see what I would I would assume though that if you appeal to Caesar and you drop the charges, you can unappeal to Caesar and say, Thank you, Festus. I really didn't do anything go your way. Right. Okay. Yeah, the but only that's reason. logical and we're probably about legal and there's a difference. Uh, so I wonder what Caesar was the current Caesar was like. Like what was his background? Like, was he, did he have a good relationship with Festus? Uh, was it strained? Oh, you know, you know bet, what I mean? Like, I'll bet money that he didn't know who Festus was. Really? Just like the president. Maybe. He might know a few of the governors, but he doesn't know who the mayors are. You know? Yeah, so it's like, wow. he probably received Paul, like, who is this guy? And who's Festus again? <laughs> Like that, you think? Well, I'm sure it would be in the second portion of the letter. Yeah. You know, dear Caesar, I'm Festus. I live in Windsor, and <laughs> my job is this to you know, blow yourself up as much as you can. And oh, my then, God. And then I sent you to, to talk to this, this tall guy. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to look pretty silly. The relationship between the Festus and Caesar at that time is documented in the Bible, or I think they're looking up and seeing so much to know. And, and when you read 27, it seems absurd to me sending a prisoner not to indicate also the charges. Paul's been there for a while, and Festus has had all kinds of, evidently they're giving him a lot of time, you know, Festus has had a lot of time to ponder what kind of BS can I put in writing to make him look bad, and he still can't do it. I mean, when you're innocent, you're innocent. Yeah, he's heard, I mean, he and King Agrippa have talked. Yeah, both ways, right? And so he's heard the charge, I'm sure. But this is kind of like maybe like formal. Yeah, still got nothing. Can't put anything formal writing or. You know, at this point, I don't know, Paul is in like house arrest or something, but like he shouted, like, look at this man. Paul's probably not, I mean, he's not driving, sure, physically, but. Well, he's got to be eating the king's food and he's staying in the king's palace. And and the letter could be really short and sweet. He could say, you know, dear Caesar, this guy's innocent. And those guys are jealous. Sincerely or asbestos. run across an article it says yes paul as a roman citizen had the right to it, it's a right to a trial before caesar he leveraged that right stephen or and jesus did not have that right because they were not roman citizens right one died 
the other could have prevented his death, but didn't. Jesus. Later on in the article, it says, yeah, in a, actually, in appealing to Caesar, Paul had a dual purpose. Yes, he, prevent, he prevented an unjust trial in Jerusalem, prevented himself from getting killed unjustly. But he also appealed to Caesar because God had told him to. For you, as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, you must also testify in Rome. So he say, used his citizenship. Say that. Say, say that last part again. Uh, it's Acts twenty three eleven. For as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. Bingo. So he could have gotten out, but God said, "I don't want you to get out." Thank you. Ah. We're just peachy. Okay. Coffee yes. pot's okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. You guys usually order when everybody gets here? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, sometime right. after seven. Sounds good. All right, thanks. Yeah, that's why it was a only directed. Okay, so, so I'm going to give us a little sneak peek into the future because this is so good. No, 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 don't spoil it. Oh, it's so amazing. It's no. so crazy. It won't make me come back tomorrow to see you. You're going to go on, you know. You, you want it to say to be continued. So I was looking when we were reading this. I, was, I can't help it. I was, well, it's, it speaks to what we're talking about right now. It answers the question. But it also uh, supports exactly what we just said. So so this whole time, I'm like, where does, where does Agrippa speak, right? Agrippa is supposed to be bringing the formal charges, right, of the Jewish leaders in this court and i'm looking like i see paul talking getting his defense and then i see festus talking and then i see agrippa say one little thing in verse 28 in such a short time are you persuading me to become a christian that's all he says <laughs> and then and then in verse 30 so the, it says the king agrippa got up and with him the governor and bernice and those sitting with them, and as they were leaving, they said to one another, "This man is not. This man is not doing anything deserving death or imprisonment." So they're all in complete agreement that he's innocent. Mm -hmm. And then, and then in thirty-two, it says, "Agrippa said to Festus, mm -hmm. this man could have been released if he had not appealed to Caesar." Which brings up a very interesting point. He's appealed to Caesar. Hey, morning, Ralph. Ralph. morning. But yet he goes through, in, in chapter 26, he goes through the trial and his defense, even though he could say something or he could say nothing, but he's still going to Caesar. Yes. Why do chapter 26 and, and give them his, his defense when it doesn't make any difference? He's going anyway. He's going anyway. And I think it was just exactly like you said. He is doing what God told him to do. You shall testify to the Gentiles and to the kings. And he's doing it. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to Caesar and I'm going to tell him about Jesus. <laughs> he's like, I don't care if I'm not guilty. I don't care if I'm innocent. I don't care if I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to go tell Caesar. And I've about got Jesus. a captive audience. So yeah. I'm going to tell them everything. Oh, that's good. So any opportunity yeah, to tell him about Jesus. That's interesting. I don't know that that's ever clicked with me or yeah. that he stands there and does his defense, even though it's a kangaroo court. He's, right. he's leaving anyway. He would, And he would have been able to go and leave. He didn't have to do all this. Right. He would have let him go. And it's just kind of awkward now. Because now, Festus is like, the guy's innocent, and I'm sending him to Caesar to to appeal. To appeal what? You know what I mean? Yep. I would still be concerned if I was Festus. Because he doesn't have anything to write. To, to, to Caesar. There's no reason. From, from a worldly perspective, right. right? There's no reason for Caesar to be wasting his time with, with this... This room, you know, and because yeah. we're and because we're sneaking ahead and spoiling the plot, yeah. 
is there any place in here that we see what Festus does like? To the to Caesar? Yeah. Maybe that'll be you a question for tomorrow. Maybe. I'm not seeing anything jumping out as like a letter or something. Yeah. So after all this, we don't get to know. See, there's another one of those. It leaves the detail out. <laughs> we don't get to know what that's just finally writes to Caesar so that he doesn't look like an idiot. <laughs> I could I could make something up. Yeah. Dear Caesar, this guy appealed to you before we had all the facts. Now that we have all the facts, he's still giving himself up and wants to see you. Don't lay any of this on me. Sorry. <laughs> Lo love Festus. Yeah, have a nice day. And it's all King Agrippa's fault, by the way. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, I'm sending him and I'm innocent. And so and so is he. <laughs> he really lost touch. He wants to appeal this case. That is no case. I don't think I would have sent him to get out of here. But but again, unless Paul rescinds his request to go to Caesar, that's just the wrong. Okay. So, Paul, yeah, according to the law, according to the law, which is yeah, interesting. Yeah, but Paul knows that he's going because God said go. Mm -hmm. So, whatever happens during this little chain of report, he's going anyway. But yeah, I would imagine the bestest would have said, "Please rescind your request so that I don't like it again. You don't look like an idiot. Everybody doesn't look like an idiot." Paul is saying, no, that's it. Go to Rome, I'm going to Rome. Hey, hear this guy out on this, like, Well, and, and you have to assume, too, that to a point, and it's all something, but Caesar's a pretty busy guy. And you've gone to the Supreme Court, so you're taking up their time. Well, what's the charges? Well, there really aren't any. I just wanted to talk to you while I was here and explain to you who Jesus is. Jesus. Oh my God! So you know everybody's got to fool us. Yeah. This is. Go ahead. Oh, I just was going to, this was actually Nero. That was the Caesar at this point in time. Nero? The, the yeah. The wacko guy? One of the wacko guys. There was a couple. Was 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 <laughs> this one of the ones, was this the one that blamed the um, burning of Rome on Christians and sent them to the gladiators arena? Oh, I don't know. But at this point in time, he was... Later, a notorious enemy of Christians. The first five years under his reign, though, he was regarded as wise and just. And Paul had no reason to believe that he would be anti-Christian. So, uh, interesting. Okay, so this Nero, at least at this point in time, was not necessarily the one that he was should young. have been feared by the Christians. He was all that fiddle and in the mood and burning wrong. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should we should wrap up. Hey, Sarah, how are you doing? Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're it's glad you got up. She opened, and like I kind of feel like I'm an easy day today. <laughs> Not to get up early. Uh, yeah, I am gonna take care of you guys. Oh, okay. So, check what? in. Do we see anything right now? We're good. We're waiting on Andrew, probably and Jason. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We need another table for it too. Oh. All right. All right. Yeah, let's go ahead and wrap up. Let you guys get to your thing. Anybody feel led to pray out? I'll 
pray out. Cool. Lord, we thank you for the day. Thank you for who you are and for what you've done for us. Lead us, guide us, protect us today. Send your angel armies down to surround us. Fight us spirits of battle. We just thank you for your sacrifice. It's in Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.